Adventure Park kids. Happy Sunday. We are on the fourth week of our current series. He left the tomb empty, but our hearts full. And we have been talking about Jesus's, Jesus's death, resurrection, and the time that he spent after raise, being risen from the dead with his disciples. And we're going to continue that story today. Um, we are going to still be in John, but remember, the life of Jesus and all of the stories about his time on earth with his disciples can be found in four books in the Bible. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And they're all found in the New Testament. And they're the first books of the New Testament. And so a lot of these stories about Jesus' resurrection, his death and his resurrection, um, and all of his miracles before that, you can, when you read all four of these stories, there's different details and things that you can read about. And some, some books don't share things and the other books do. And it's just really cool to read all four of them and see, you know, it's just some of the differences. And it um, has to do with the fact that these were different people that wrote these books. And so they focused on different things about Jesus. And today we're going to look at the last story in the book of John which is kind of where we've been this month. And it's in uh, the book of John chapter 21, okay? But remember, if you go back and you look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Luke, you can also see just kind of some, some other details about Jesus's time with the disciples after he rose from the dead. But the reason we're in John is because it's actually a little bit more detailed. These times that Jesus was with the disciples after being risen from the dead. So remember last week, we talked about how they found out that Jesus was alive and Jesus um, showed up with Mary right in front of the tomb. And then he showed up in the room where the disciples were. And remember those doors, what was special about the doors where the disciples were? Do you remember? They were locked, they were locked shut. And do we remember why they were locked shut? Because the disciples were scared that they possibly would be put to death as well because they loved Jesus and they followed him and they believed him to be the son of God. And a lot of the religious leaders at that time were so against that and didn't want the, these disciples to tell people about Jesus and to tell people that Jesus died and rose again and, and that he's the Messiah. They were so um, mad that these disciples would say something so they the disciples were scared and so they hid behind locked doors and what happened Jesus the doors didn't keep Jesus out he's resurrected so he went right through those doors and he was right there with them and we even found out that Thomas wasn't there which was one of the um one of the, sorry, the uh, disciples, <laughs> and he wasn't in the room when Jesus came the first time, and Jesus came again, and he showed Thomas his his the wounds in his hands, the marks from from where he was nailed, and then the the wound in his side, the fact that he was stabbed in the side, and Thomas believed in Jesus. So, Jesus was it was it the same? After, now that he was risen from the dead, he wasn't with the disciples all the time like he was before. So even though they saw Jesus being risen from the dead, there was still some fear in them about what was going to happen. What were they going to do now? I mean, they had just spent three years following Jesus around. They did a bunch of trips. They watched Jesus heal people. They listened to Jesus' sermons. They served Jesus. They went off on their own trips and prayed to. Now they didn't know what to do. What was gonna happen? And so they got kind of bummed and Peter and a few of the disciples decided that they were gonna go back to what they used to do. And I don't know if you guys know this or remember, but a lot, not all of them, but a lot of the disciples were actually fishermen before they met Jesus. And so they decided they were gonna go fishing. They were gonna go do something that they knew they could do. I'm imagining that they haven't worked in a while, so maybe they need money for their families. They're hungry, I don't know. And they decide they're gonna go fishing. And you kind of, when you're reading this in chapter 21, it's kind of like you feel that like, 
they're disappointed maybe. Kind of like they're disappointed in what's happening. Jesus is gone. We're still under Roman rule. He didn't save us from anything. I'm wondering if those are the thoughts and doubts that are going through their minds. So they decided we're gonna go back to what we know and we're gonna go fishing. And did you know that they were on that boat all night and they caught zero fish? Zero fish. I've tried fishing before and I also have caught zero fish. Have you ever tried fishing? It's one of those things where it's, I mean, no offense if you love fishing. I know a lot of people who do. My grandpa loved fishing and he actually took us fishing a couple times. But it just was so boring because really, I mean, I, I just, I never experienced catching fish. So anyways, these disciples were out there all night. I bet they're tired, they're hungry, they're sore, they're wet, they're cold, and they have no fish to show for it. And so they're kind of close to the shore and right when the sun is coming up, there's somebody on the beach and he's standing there and he goes, friends, you don't have any fish, do you? And the disciples call back, no, none. And so G it was actually Jesus who was on the beach, but they didn't know it yet. And so he told them, Jesus said from the beach, throw your nets on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. And so they did, and guess what? They caught so many fish that they had a really hard time getting it back in the boat. And that, at that moment, you guys, at that moment, the disciple John said to Peter, this is our Lord. He over there on the beach, that is Jesus. Now, I think that at that moment they knew who it was because this actually happened. Something very similar happened to Peter when he was out fishing and he couldn't get any fish. And before even knowing Jesus, Jesus did the same thing. And so it's pretty cool that Jesus must know what's going on in Simon's heart. Why is he back on that boat? He's disappointed. He's scared. He doesn't know what to do. I'm going to show him another miracle to remind him who I am. And so he says, or so, so John tells Peter, it's like, hello, dude, what just happened? Look at all these fish. Guess who is that is? I bet that I know that's the Lord. And do you know what Peter did? He didn't even wait, wait to get to the shore. He dove out of his boat and he swam as fast as he could to meet Jesus. And they weren't super far away, okay? They were pretty close, but still he had to swim to get there. And when Peter, so when Peter heard it was him, he was so excited. And then all the other disciples brought in the boat and um, they realized that Jesus had a fire set up. He had bread, he had fish cooking already. Yeah, they, they ate fish for breakfast. <laughs> Have you ever eaten fish for breakfast? I haven't. Um, maybe a fish, like, Maybe, I would have we ever, like, is there a cereal that's shaped like a fish, but obviously doesn't taste like fish? I'm trying to think, I don't know. Have you ever had goldfish for breakfast, like the crackers? Maybe that's the closest we've ever had fish for breakfast. Um, and so Jesus is so amazing. He knows they're disappointed. He knows they're tired. He knows they're hungry and he has breakfast waiting for them. And so they eat together. And then Jesus takes Peter aside for a minute and he wants to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Peter. He knows that Peter's struggling. And the last time that Peter and Jesus had a one-on-one -on -one, like look or, or moment was when Peter realized that he had denied ever knowing Jesus because he was scared. A few times when Jesus was being whipped and questioned, he was arrested. A few people found Peter around the, the area where they were doing these things to Jesus. And they said, you are one of his disciples. You're a follower of Jesus. And three times this happened where they, that where they tried to, tried to say that Peter was a Jesus follower. And Peter, do you know how Peter responded? He lied and he said, no. And he, 
that and he did it three times and at three after doing it three times he realized the mistake that he made because Jesus actually told him that that was gonna happen and Peter was like no way I would never do that and then after doing it three times he realized oh my gosh I just denied Jesus three times and so here we are again Jesus is having an opportunity to encourage and love on Peter because he's he's just in a really he has a really heavy heart right now and Jesus is so amazing how he loves us and how he takes care of us even when we're the ones who do the things that are wrong and so he comes over with Peter and he says three times so remember Peter denied Jesus three times and now Jesus is giving him an opportunity to say that he loves Jesus three times so Jesus asks him do you love me and Peter goes yes and Jesus says feed my lambs and then he asked him a second time do you love me Simon uh, and he says yes Lord you know that I love you and Jesus says shepherd my sheep and then for the last time he says Simon son of John do you love me and Peter was so grieved he was like Jesus Come on, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And then Jesus said, feed my sheep. And at this moment, when he's saying, feed my lambs, shepherd my sheep, and feed my sheep, he's talking about the church. He's talking about believers. He's giving Peter a role of leadership among all of the disciples, among all of the followers of Jesus. And he's saying, Peter, you are somebody who is going to because a lot of times the church or us who believe and follow Jesus, we're Jesus' sheep. It's kind of because a shepherd, pastor, Jesus is our pastor, he's our shepherd, and we're like his sheep. And so he's talking in a metaphor here, and he's telling Peter, take care of my church, take care of my believers, take care of the people who follow me. Feed them, give them words like we're doing now, give, teach them like I taught you. And we know that except for the one, one disciple who betrayed Jesus, Judas, all of the other disciples went in and um, started the church that we know today. And so I just want to end our story here and let's take a moment to pray because I don't know how you're... Oh my goodness, my watch just said something. It says here, and let's take a moment to pray because... And Siri says, I'm not sure I understand. That's okay, Siri. We'll teach you someday. So I want to take a moment to pray because I don't know about you, but I've had a really, really hard week. I don't know if you can tell by my voice, but it's pretty stuffed up. And a lot of other things have happened this week that have just really, really kind of stunk, if I'm being honest. And so... Um, I guess you could say kind of like Peter I'm a little disappointed but what I love is that I know who Jesus is and I know that he's with me and I know that hard things can come I have I might have to deal with things that are difficult but he's with me and he did what he did he died on the cross and he rose from the dead and I have hope and I have joy and I have love and I have the Holy Spirit because of that and it gives me the strength to get through the hard stuff and so this morning, I don't know where you are. I don't know if you're also, maybe if you had a hard week or if you're disappointed this morning. And maybe you're not, praise God, right? But let's take a moment to pray and just recognize who Jesus is and recognize that just like he did for Peter, he comes alongside us and he wants to encourage us and he wants to, he wants to um, fill us up so that we can continue forward and he does that not just so that we can be better, but the whole point is that we would also love other people. Jesus loves us so that we can love others. And even though we're going through a hard time, we can still help somebody because Jesus gives us what we need to get through that hard time. So let's pray. Lord God, we worship you and we thank you so much because you are a good, good father. You are big and you are mighty and you are strong and you are wonderful, Lord Jesus. And we thank you and we praise you this morning because of who you are. 
Lord God, I just want to pray for anybody today who might be feeling a little bit of disappointment. Maybe there's somebody here today who's a little discouraged. Or maybe somebody's sick like me and just needs your healing touch, Lord. I ask in Jesus' name that you would pour over us with your Holy Spirit. That you would give us the strength we need, Lord God, to battle through the things that are, are really kind of stinking right now. That you would help us look into next week with, with a clear vision, with a happy and thankful heart, knowing who you are and that you're right here with us. Thank you for encouraging us. Fill us with your love and joy today so that we can continue following you and sharing your love with others who need it. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, have a wonderful Sunday.